Hello, uh, today we'll, we will start with chapter 3 that is about uh, testing biomaterials. So, how can we will see how can biomaterials be evaluated to determine if they are biocompatible? So, we will study in this chapter how can the biomaterials be evaluated to determine if they are biocompatible and if they will function in a biologically appropriate manner in the in vivo environment. Uh, this will be, uh, this chapter will be an introduction uh, and it's common to all biomaterials, biological testing. Here we will see two types of assessment of materials. Evaluation under in vitro, so evaluation under in vitro conditions. When I say in vitro, I mean in glass, so in laboratories. So evaluation under in vitro condition is one type of assessment of biomaterials. The other type is in vivo. So evaluation under in vivo condition. When I say in vivo, I mean when we apply or when we do a test, when we perform a test in a living organism. However, in vitro is in glass, when we perform tests in laboratories, uh, in glasses. In vivo is when we perform a test in a living organism. So, our focus, we need to evaluate a biomaterial to determine at first if it's biocompatible and how it will function in vivo in the living organism. We assure that uh, in vitro tests are the first steps in the assessment. So before working in vivo, we need to do in vitro tests. In vitro tests provide rapid and inexpensive data on biological interactions. In vitro tests are rapid and they are inexpensive compared to in vivo tests. But the question here, do in vitro test truly measure what will occur in the much more complex environment, I mean in vivo? Sure, no. In vitro test will not truly measure what will occur in vivo environment, in living, in the living organism either in animals or in a human. As an in vitro test, the first step in the assessment of a biomaterial, we have to tests in glass. Uh, we take samples and we do the assessment in the laboratory. The second step is in vivo test. Uh, we will talk about these two tests in details. So, in vitro test is rapid and inexpensive. It also minimizes the use of animals in research. Uh, uh, 
and طبعا ال animals when I say animals يعني ال animals are used in research during uh, the assessment of biomaterials uh, to model the environment that might be encountered in humans but also here comes another question will the animal model also provide data useful for predicting how much or for predicting how a device or a biomaterial performs in humans this is also an important question uh, really without validation through human clinical studies it's very difficult it's difficult to draw a strong conclusion from performance of biomaterials in animals so without validation through human clinical studies we cannot uh, say uh, if this material is compatible is bio if it's biocompatible or not it's difficult to draw strong conclusions from performance in animals not all the time the uh, use of animals or doing tests in animals uh, give us uh, uh, strong results or uh, uh, will validate the use of a biomaterial in a human يعني ممكن هيدي الماتيريال هيدي البيوماتيريال when uh, injected or when uh, tested in animals ممكن تعطي نتيجة إيجابية وما يكون في أي ردة فعل وما يكون في أي مشكلة ولكن لما منطبق أو لما uh, when we test this biomaterial in a human in a human لما هيدي البيوماتيريال uh, when it's tested when tested when testing this material in a human it may uh, give uh, يعني, uh, opposite results ممكن تعطي نتائج عكسية تماما يعني ممكن البيو ماتيريال اللي ما تعمل اي مضاعفات بالانيمال تعمل مضاعفات بالهيومن بادي uh, وتتفاعل uh, اكثر بكثير فاذا with the animal model we cannot predict how a material or how a device will perform will perform in the human body, the human body. Uh, but when we design an animal testing procedure here the selection of the animal is also important uh, we have to choose the animal that is uh, that is تقريباً anatomically or biochemically similar to the situation in humans but the selection of animal is very important here وطبعا at the end the testing always leads to experimental variability the more complex the system the larger the variability so statistics are needed in any assessment we need statistics when I say statistics so we talk about probability so statistics provides an assurance that within a defined probability the results are meaningful uh, statistics could be used or must be used at two stages in testing biomaterials it uh, should be used before the experiment 
also after the experiment. So statistics should be used before an experiment uh, to indicate the minimum number of samples, so how much samples we need in this experiment to yield meaningful results, to obtain meaningful results, good results. And statistics should be also used after the experiment to help to extract the maximum useful information. Also here, uh, uh, note that the national, national and international standards and protocols for testing biomaterials must be followed. Now, in vitro assessment of tissue compatibility, let's talk about in vitro assessment of tissue compatibility. So we have two types of assessment. The first step in the assessment of biocompatibility of a new biomaterial is in vitro toxicity test that include cytotoxicity. So this is the first step in the assessment of biocompatibility of a new biomaterials. It's the in vitro toxicity test or what's called cytotoxicity. So uh, using this test, uh, we study if the material causes toxic effects at the cellular level. So if the material when injected or when used, if the material uh, may cause death to the cells or if the material may cause alterations in cellular membrane permeability or if the material may cause enzymatic uh, inhibition or if the material will cause cell lysis. So this is the first step of assessment of biomaterials. A toxic material, when I say toxic material, uh, so this material releases chemicals in quantities to kill the cells. So if the cell is killed, if the materials released by this toxic, by this, uh, uh, if the chemicals released by this toxic material kill the cells, so I can say that uh, this material may cause uh, uh, toxic effects, may lead to death or cell lysis. Uh, also, the number of cells that are affected is an indication of the dose or the potency of the chemical. So how much this chemical is toxic? The number of cells affected is an indication about how much this chemical is toxic. Here, uh, in this slide, we talk about two concepts. The concept of delivered dose and the concept of exposure dose. The concept of delivered dose refers to the dose that is actually absorbed by the cell. So, delivered dose means the dose that is absorbed by the cell. How, for example, and the exposure dose is the amount applied to the system. For example, if an animal, if an animal is exposed to an atmosphere, any atmosphere containing an noxious substance, I mean a harmful substance. So this is the exposure dose. As an animal tarrad lahida lahido lahidi harmful or noxious substances. This is the exposure dose. But only a small portion of the inhaled substance will be absorbed and delivered to the internal organs and cells of the animal. So this is the delivered dose. 
So delivered dose refers to the absorbed dose exposure will amount applied dose applied to the uh, system or to the animal. Ensure that uh, different cells have different susceptibilities to the toxic effects of foreign substances. The cells that are the most sensitive, her name is immune target cells, are referred to as target cells. هلا أكيد حيكون عنا cell culture method فإذا in vitro test وال animal studies in vivo test cell culture method he evaluate target cell toxicity target cell toxicity by using delivered doses of the test substance فإذا نحنا بال cell culture method نحكي ب delivered dose the absorbed the amount of absorbed dose بينما بال animal studies the animal studies evaluates the exposure dose and do not determine the target cell dose. This is the difference. In the cell culture method, we are going to do evaluation of the delivered dose. In the animal studies, we are going to do evaluation of the exposure dose. طبعا ال difference in dosage بيأثر كتير على sensitivity of cell culture methods ولازم يكون عندنا comparison بين ال cell culture method وال in vivo studies أكيد لازم يكون في comparison من خلال فإذا هون to properly compare the sensitivity of cell culture method with in vivo studies data from local toxicity models such as the implantation should be compared. Comparison here is very important. It reduces the uncertainties of the liver dose 